Hi and welcome everyone. Today we're going to talk about PowerShell and the for loop. So if you ever wonder how to use that loop, well, this is the video for you. My name is Kami Position and let's have a go. Okay, the for loop. Why would I bother? Why? Why would I need loops? Well, loops is, you know, if you need to repeat one, one action more than once, or even zero two more times, depending. You don't always need to use loop. However, for loops is pretty much basic, I think, like everywhere, and knowing it, it's really helpful. And especially when the initial syntax might look a bit odd, once you learn how to use it, you will be, well, you will kind of need to use it. And at the very end of this video, I have a, I have an actual recast scenario where I was encountered recently with the application insights from Azure, where it gave me a set of columns and, and rows, and I needed to glue them together. And follow apparently came to help, so that should be great. If you're interested, because I have all this code on the GitHub, and you can find the link, link in the description. So if you look, would like to actually have a look on the code yourself, then please go download it, use it, enjoy. So what is the basic syntax for loop? It's pretty much the full with four which is our, our statement. And then we have pretty much something called initial value, which is set where, where we start counting from what value, what is it, what is the variable. Then we have certain condition that will happen and whether that condition evaluates true or false, the loop will run or it will exit. And then what happens when we get to the end of my code? So I've done run my code, I did it, and then what to do with after that, what's the condition? And that's usually when we increment it by one, usually. We don't have to. And then, we pretty much, for every loop, you will run my code. So to make it a bit easier, I made a little little diagram, which I hope will help you to get the idea. So you see, that's where we start. And now this is our initialize part. So initialize index, and that's like 99% of time you see something like dollar sign $i equals zero. And I in that case stands for either initializer or index. And why zero? Because I guess we always zero index in, in the in the arrays and etc. So probably that's where it came from. But this is why the last sign I or you know the language variable is called I. Okay? And then we have our condition. So that's our if kind of if statement, although we don't say. So in our condition is for example that in that case my I is less than 10. As long as it's less than 10, it will the, my loop will go. So obviously we stating at the beginning that this is zero, so in that case, yeah, it is less than 10, so let's go. So when it's true, you will run my code, you do whatever I tell you to do, and then at the end, you will increase counter. So now we got here, and our loop is one, still less than 10, so we run again, to the point when we get that this is 10, and when it's actually 10, then you will exit the loop. So this is how it looks on the, you know, more diagram -y kind of visual point of view. But okay, let's dig in. Let's have a look at the of the actual code. So I made the very first example very explicit just to give you a bit more idea. So we see we starting with the as we can see, this is our initializer, so initial value. Then we have this separate oh, I didn't mention yeah we separate statements with the semicolons. So yeah, I mean I put them here, I didn't say them loud. But you can see, so this is my initial value, and in, in that case, I just call it my variable just for fun. To don't be, you know, dollar sign i like like we always see it. We see it many times enough in your life that yeah, we don't need to repeat it here. Then that this is my condition. So what I'm checking again, obviously, and obviously in that case, I'm checking that this is less than ten. And then my variable again, I made it very explicit because we could do my variable plus plus, but I just want to do plus one, and then the loop rerun. And then what we're going to do, we're going to display pretty much the value of my variable is this, so whatever the value is, and I made it just so it doesn't like, you know, go through the screen in a matter of less than a second. So I made it that we wait two seconds after each iteration so you can just kind of see how it goes, at least for the beginning. Okay, so let's run this bit. So we can see my variable is zero, it's one, two, so we keep iterating until we had this number, and then the loop will stop. But let's give it a second. As you can see, this is very exciting looking on the timer, like, yeah, I can do it for hours. Good. So now it's 9. So what's happened? Why did not 10? Because then we increased at this point, we were at 9. 
Yeah, so at this point we're at 9. The slip ended, so it increased the value by 1. So at this point, when this check happened, it was already 10. That's why it didn't run 10, my value is 10. Okay, obviously we can do it. This is a bit more, this is a bit more familiar because we have now a familiar, more popular because we have plus plus, yeah? So rather than doing explicit plus one, plus plus equals plus one. So now if I run this and we're going this up to 99, so let's go, see, a second. And then, yeah, we have 99 iterations because 98 is, is a same story like with 10 here. Okay, and we can also, you know, do something different. Like for example, we can, if you want to, if it's like high, because maybe I like to go decrease, or maybe actually the value you're working for, I'm going with the least, I'm going down, you know, down here rather than up here, then absolutely I can do all the, then I can do all the lists, like, you know, go in decreasing. So obviously now we broke at six, why? Because we set a 10 buses as long as it is greater than five. Yeah, I don't need to be limited to whatever. I can. So I think that gives you the basic idea how the for loop works. So let's now do, you know, have a look at some bit more PowerShell stuff or what we can do to be more creative with it. For example, here, you see, at this point, I don't have a variable. I don't specify it. And this is completely legal. I can absolutely do that. And the reason for that is, is that I specify my variable outside. So I call that outside just for fun. So we have, we're going from seven until 15 and then we iterate by one by one. So let's try. And we see, started from 7, and then on 14, as expected. Okay, great, but what about, you know, you will quite often get a, an array of things. So it's not like you will get numbers, you, you might actually need to, you know, go and iterate through things that you get already. Maybe usually some software will give you that, yeah, isn't it? I need to do something with that data. So let's specify our array, and let's double check count. Yep, that's four items. We have four items. In, in the in this array and arrays in the case that's to show you can actually request a specific you know specific item from there you don't need to do things so uh, you don't need to go release all of them you can ask for the one specific so in that case you have for example pets and now in square brackets I put two that will be in fact a third a third item why because again arrays are zero indexed that's why we get actually a third item okay so for example i like to you know list my pets who doesn't like to display pets talk about pets so let's do it and we can see it did run this once and now we're on the in the array so obviously this now probably start to look boring to you because we have the last sign ein yeah and now look what's going on here i'm telling you until my our index is less than count so that was four as we know from this point and then keep looping and what's going on here you have pets and i have the last sign i so in other words when this loop runs for the first one that will be pets square bracket zero then you run again square brackets one two and three so you will pretty much iterate through that array for me but what if i i don't know maybe i like to do a bit more bit more whatever i want to actually put a numbered list because i can isn't it so you know sometimes we like to put some st fancy looking stuff in the shell and we can absolutely do that so obviously what we're going on here it's blank line then again my pets in order but the what happens here you see i have obviously my standard index i have now i'm getting the length of my of my array yeah which is dot count is actually our length also that's you can use that both words intermediary and then we take by one. But what I've done here, because obviously we as the human beings, we count from one. We are one, if you would say in the programming languages, programming context, we are one index. Yeah, we are not zero based index, we are one based index. So obviously I will want to start to think from one. So what we've done here, I just created another variable, which is, you know, number is whatever i is, and then add one to it. So in that case, when I am on the, let's say, first example, which is cat, yep. So when I'm grabbing the cat, it will take my number. So the i is zero, plus one, it's one. So that's why we have one, and it gets me one from the i. So we can make it a bit more human readable. Great. What else we can do? We can work with strings if we want to. So for example, here I'm, you know, beginning that the text is like literally an empty string, strength. 
and then until my text length, because pretty much when you have a text and it has certain, you know, number of characters, it is length. So until it's 10 characters long, you will keep adding a symbol at to it. So what's what do you think what's gonna happen here? What's how we gonna what's gonna end? How are we gonna get it? Well, let's have a look. We get some sort of I would call it half of the Christmas tree, if you if you wish. But you get the idea. So obviously we started with blank and I have one, two, and etc. up to the is it nine? Yeah, nine nine ads in the at the at, at, in, in the string. So I can obviously use it also to work with strings. Alright, but what if I need to sometimes we need to do, you know create a a loop within a loop so we need to like iterate for the couple of different things so let's have a look so what is this this is a shortcut for creating an array so effectively what I'm doing here I'm telling you create me an array which start at starts at one ends at ten so that's what it does and if we look for it pretty much what we got here we got we are iterating through i so the for the for R and I we checking against the rows and then we iterating for the J where we iterating against columns. So, but, so and then we do some more things. So I wonder if you can tell what this will do because obviously this is a bit more complex. I wonder if you guessed it's something what I had to do a lot of when I was back in school and this is pretty much to do a multiplication. So. Let's have a look from the beginning what's going on here. That will probably it will be probably a bit easier. So when we have it, so as we can see, it increases that way. See, so it gets to the one through ten, then it increases this one by one, and then again gets through ten and does some maths for us. So what happens here? Well, for, for the starter, to make it very visible, I made it that grab me the roll number i, so in that case that will be first number, which is zero. I mean, sorry, a, z a zero number, first number from the i, so that will be one. And then give me a column, which is j. So that in that case that will be also one. And then we multiply them. So what happens here, pretty much we have row by, I mean the value from row for times value from the columns, and this is result. And that's what we display, display here as the t. I mean, I probably meant text when I did that. And so first one obviously happens. So we have both, we know it would be once. Then this loop happens, yeah? Because obviously we went through one. So it happens then j is increased to two. So that's for we have two and then three for 10. Now, probably this is the most interesting in part for you what happens here. Because obviously that we get to the point where this column is, you know, we get to the reach, we are 10. So J is kind of finished, done, yeah? J needs to, already this evaluates as false. So it will not happen anymore because J will be, will be more than that. So what happens now? So now this loop is finished. We come back to this loop, to the I, to the first loop which goes through our rows, and that will get in, increased by one. So now one becomes two. And again, now, because that will be, again, iterate 10 times for the J row, and you can see that this that's why you have a bunch of ones at the beginning, and then this increase, then when we get to the 10, our first value increase to two, and then now again, this loop starts from one to 10, and that's how you can do like a multiplication. So yeah, that's something so you know you can do nested loops if you need to, and that's how they work. So first loop will need to be false before we can even come back to the top four. We could do even more of them, but probably that will give you the idea. What else we can do? Well, what if I don't specify the condition? Yeah? So in that case, I specify my index, specify what happens then, and then loop number. So what you reckon is going to happen now? It will keep running until, I guess, memory will get clogged up and then it will flash. Look, ha have a look what's going on with my CPU at the moment. It just, yeah, uses it all the time. And look, it even writes one megabyte per second to my hard disk. This is crazy, isn't it? But yeah, and the only way to get out of this loop is to literally press Control-C to break it. 
because I didn't specify condition, I could put the condition is true and we'll just keep looping, looping, looping endlessly. So we cannot always specify the condition. We don't always know what it might be. Like we sometimes there are cases like we don't know. We cannot foresee it and there is no way to know it. So what we can do, we can, for example, inside the loop, we can specify condition when we want to break out of the loop. Yeah, so as you can see, it's same case from the before, where we don't have condition. However, here I have, if this is equal to 10, then we're going to break. So break is a special word in Parsha. Spine that literally will tell you to stop what you're doing right now. Just, you know, hold your horses and stop. So when we run this, boom, 10. Breaking out, you see? So we got to the 10, uh, sorry, not 10, 1000. We display this breaking out statement and then it broke. Yeah, so let's run it once again. Just make sure I wasn't lucky. Well, I wasn't. That's how it works. So that's how you can, you know, if you meet certain conditions, just get out of uh, get out of here and move on. Great. And now this is my 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 this is my case what I had to do with Azure application insights. Now I don't believe that every one of you will have an Azure, Azure application insights at hand. So I kind of recreated a scenario where we can literally just run it locally. And what applications I was you know, running query there for, to achieve some information. And pretty much what it did, it gave me an object that had something like that, like a bunch of headers and a bunch of rows. And as you can see within headers, we have obviously one, like a flat array. that is just literally headers and we have a bunch of rows, but in rows, I had like a, you know, a multiple like a rows, like a multiple items, but they didn't have headers. And obviously while working with PowerShell, I always want to return you a PowerShell object. Like this is natural to PowerShell and I have power, when I have PowerShell object, I can, you know, request it, I can do something about it. I don't need to do any sort of conversions. So obviously the idea is I always want to have a PowerShell object. Whenever I'm outputting something, I'm giving you, you know, I write you some code or something, I want you to have a PowerShell object. So obviously we need to somehow glue to, through it, glue these properties together somehow, because I cannot just have blank, you know, just the names, because that would be a bit messy. That won't be partial object. So how will we do that? Well, we want run. So you see now, if I run this, we can see this is my array. If I do rows, I can do rows. Now, what's where I'm going to, I literally commented every line one by one here. So just we go for this slowly. So what we need, we need to store information somewhere, yeah? Because when I create one object, I need to store it somewhere. Now I need to create another one and another one, another one. I need to store them somewhere. And the perfect case for it to use, well, it's not very powershell but it's actually to use something what probably will look very familiar to people who've seen c -sharp or Net Framework, to actually create something called list. Because problem is with array, by definition, arrays cannot be expanded. So if I like say create I that have three properties or three objects or whatever, if I want to expand it, that will be very costly. That will be a performance hit and they are not really designed for that. So I cannot really use array here because I don't know. I mean, in that case, I will know. But what if I, you know, will add more, op, more, more properties, more roles, or if I add more headers? I don't know it, isn't it? So in that case, list uh, literally pretty much gives you a flexibility like arrays, although you can, I mean flexibility, you can use them as arrays, although you can expand them on fly. So obviously in that case, I'm just declaring a empty list, which is, we can see system collections generic list. And now here I specify actually what is what I expect. I'm just expecting object. An object can be anything really. Okay, so now we have a, we have we have a loop, isn't it? So obviously, and here you probably use, or if not, you maybe heard about for each, which is another kind of loop. And I made it to make it very obvious what's going on with the code in inside here. And if you haven't heard about for each, well, that's how you use it. In the for each, we're pretty much telling it to create like a local variable on fly from what? So for each row in rows, which I think so for every single row, row yeah, in this rows, I want you to do something with every single row. Okay, so we will literally work in like a, with one row at the time. Okay, then 
I need to create a blank PowerShell object. So that's, I need to, I will be iterating for that information. I need to add something to it. I need to keep adding properties to it. So that will be, you know, my header and my and my value. Header, name, header, name. So that's I'm declaring an empty PowerShell object. And how we do that? We declare a hash table and the type is PS custom object. And this is whenever you'll be outputting something to the shell, this is pretty much the most standard way of doing that and how we can do it on fly. And now actually we're going to use, you know, our row. So now what we're going through, because obviously we're going through the row. So we're on the row one. So in that case, this is these values. So it's Camille, the email and the number. So obviously we're going to start from the property zero. As many as headers there, have a look how many, you know, how long the headers count is. So it's free. So we're going to iterate three times. And then we again iterate one. So what's going on here? I have an object, so I can use a, this one, which is at member, which will literally add me the property to this one. So this one allows me to, add, you know, add the timeout. And what's going on here? I mean, yeah, this allows me to add properties to the object. So it won't be blank. After running this, it will populate it with these values. So what we're doing? Member type is not property, which means it's a field, pretty much. And then the name is headers. And then in that case, we want the obviously first one, zero. So zero will be first name. And then value is my row, which is zero. Yeah, row i, zero. So in that case will be Camille. And then it will iterate again and go to one. So in that case, my header will be one is email and value is email. And then the same for the phone number. And once we went through, once we went through that, it will now add that record to my list that we've created here. So that way it will popu we start populating the result. And once we got to the end, it will again come back to for each. And now it will take the second record from the rows. So that will be this. It will take this whole lot. And again, so now row, yeah, it will on fly become this record. And then again, we again create a empty record because we need to clear it. And then we're going through again, filling header with, with this, with the first value, email with the second value, phone number with the first value. Then we again, for each, we'll again grab the next record, replace it with the, that value will be replaced now with this lot. And again, we match these things. And after all, all of that, it will dis we can display the whole thing. So let's try it. So I think I've already did the uh, header. So let's try. And there we go. We have a real proper PowerShell object, a first name, email, phone number. It's all glued together. So obviously now if I go to result, yep, I can do that, but I can do, for example, email. Or I can grab a First name. Done. So obviously we had a, this was, yep, that was done this way and that way with the help of the, well, in that case for each and the for loop, I was actually able to glue this together. So I hope that's pretty much all I have prepared for you. Hope you've enjoyed that and you learned something new. Our for loop pretty much in essence with a little bit of for each, a bit more advanced topic, but hopefully you will find it useful at some point. Or maybe, you know, at this point you will go and start learning what, how to use for each. Why not? Because that's, for each is to be honest, the most popular one. I would say personally, that's the one I've been using the most, but sometimes you literally have to use for. So I hope when you get to this obscure part, you find this video useful. Hope you have enjoyed. Have a great evening and I see you next time. Bye bye.